What is shaping the global logistics industry in 2022? Well, COVID, more COVID, shipping lines making a lot of money like we heard earlier, and now the war in Ukraine. There's a lot going down. I'm going to try and break it all down. My name is Melvin Xavier from Golden Cargo Services. I'm the managing director and also the co-founder of Cold Chain Connect. Now, I have another question for you guys. Who amongst you wanted to be a freight forwarder growing up? You knew as a kid that you want to be a freight forwarder. I see one hand there. Anybody else? Two. Okay, fantastic. Let me ask another one. Who knew what freight forwarding was in school? Okay, a couple of hands again. Yeah, that's not a lot and a group of 100 people, just about two hands knew what it was. I have no shame in admitting that I had no idea what freight forwarding was growing up and in spite of being raised in a family of freight forwarders. And that's why conferences like these are so important to our industry. Now 20 years ago, we were all stuck behind our desks, communicating over fax machines, using pages to get people to call back, moving files. Now this was boring. We couldn't explain what we did to our kids. Last week I was in Sao Paulo and I had a picture taken at our booth with all these beautiful women and posted it on social media. And I have my friends that I haven't spoken to for years wanting to know what I did for a living. <laughs> kids today watch our stories and want to be freight forwarders. Freight forwarding and logistics is now mainstream and taught in schools and universities. And we have people like Chris and Nils to thank for that, for being pioneers in the networking space and bringing glamour to the industry. So what's my story? In 2009, in 2005, as I finished my double major in accounting and finance at a university in Dubai, I had two choices. To either pursue a career in finance and uh, become a rich banker making tons of money, or to join my family business and help to revive our Dubai office that was struggling to stay afloat. I chose the latter. I felt like I had an obligation to help my father fulfill his dream of growing the company and creating a sustainable income. Since then, there's been no looking back. We grew from a small team of three to 25 people today, and we came back into profitability within two years and helped open up new offices across Asia and Kuwait, in Cochin, Malaysia, Singapore, and now we employ over 60 people. So our number one strength is in handling perishable <coughs> and servicing the food industry. So when I met Chris and Nils in Malaysia in 2017, we saw a vacuum in the perishable networking space. So I proposed that we launch a network for forwarders that specialized in this niche. And fast forward to today, we run a successful network called Cold Chain Connect with over 75 members from around the world. So why am I sharing this story? Well, for one, this is a shameless plug for my company. But more importantly, it's to share my experience through COVID and how we have continued to grow through the pandemic. So that brings me then to the challenges and opportunities during the COVID era. Now we heard some of it already through in the panel discussion. On the sea freight side, we had blank sailings, shutdown of port operations, imbalance of container availability, and crazy freight rates that broke our backs. On air freight, things weren't much better. We saw a severely constrained capacity to carry cargo and again freight levels going up three to four times. We all know these challenges, but I want to focus on the opportunities that COVID presented itself. Our shipping lines were the first ones to capitalize on this. Before the pandemic, shipping lines, shipping was a cutthroat, low margin business where carriers competed fiercely to slash prices and attract customers. Most shipping lines swung between losing money and squeezing out a narrow profit each quarter. During the pandemic, all that changed. Shipping lines were able to charge as much as 20 times their usual freight levels, but their underlying expenses did not change much. That allowed them to keep almost all of the price increase as profits. For instance, Maersk, the world's biggest shipping line, was expected to make around $4.5 billion in 2021. What did they close the year at? Any guesses? $24 billion. The industry as a whole closed the year with a profit of $150 billion. For context, that's 50% more than what Apple makes in a typical year, and 15 times more than the profit that they made in 2019. Okay, so we know shipping lines made a lot of money, but how about us as forwarders? This is an interesting study that Ernest & Young conducted at the start of the pandemic. 
that asked forwarders what effect did the pandemic have on their business. 72% of the people said it had a mostly negative effect. Fast forward to today, in February, they ran the same study and 69% of the companies surveyed with the exact same question now believe that the pandemic had a positive effect on their business. <coughs> I'm hoping that some of you or most of you are in that number. So what changed? Well, not much in terms of COVID. No one can take away the fact that it was a deadly pandemic or that we lost a lot of time to lockdowns, quarantines, and disruptions. But what changed for us was our ability to adapt to the changing environment and capitalize on some of the opportunities that came along. Although the pandemic created supply and demand challenges we had never seen before, we saw opportunities to participate in moving PPE kits, gloves, masks, and other COVID testing supplies. If you could find a way to get the goods by air and sea within a reasonable time, clients were ready to pay a premium. And we saw that. We suddenly found ourselves in the middle of chartering planes full of essential supplies. And this was a refreshing change for us from the usual heckling with our clients for rates. Now, we may not have been doctors or nurses on the front line, but freight forwarders like you and me had an important role to play in ensuring that our supermarkets were shelved the medicines and vaccines were moving around the world, and people in Australia received the, the tissue paper. So that brings me to the latest challenge, the impact of war in Ukraine on the global supply chain. How does the war in Ukraine affect us? Well, for one, oil prices have almost doubled, resulting in fuel uh, surcharges going up by every week. And that's not ideal. For importers and exporters, this is definitely annoying. The war also impacts the cargo that moves through Black Sea. So now that's in the middle of the war zone. So vessels are trying to avoid this route, causing a backlog in Hamburg, Istanbul, and Rotterdam. And these backlogs now have an effect on your transit times and resulting in delays. We also have a challenge for the air freight as the air routes over Russia and Ukraine are now closed, this means longer flight paths and resulting in higher freight rates. There are also legal and money issues. Carriers and forwarders now are unsure about dealing with Russian entities. The Western nations are trying to cut Russia off from the global financial payment platform SWIFT. You may have heard of this, and this will make it even harder for us to receive payments on, uh, from Russia, so we don't know how it's going to be going forward. And finally, the companies and countries stopping activities in Russia also affects the Silk Route. Now, Ivo Thomas is a big champion of Silk Route, and he is somebody who advocates this uh, and, and you know, loves to talk about this. I wish he could have shared some of that insight also with us earlier. But this affects the land bridge with the movement from uh, China to Europe. So yeah, that's enough problems, though. I mean, I'd like to conclude by saying that I think we all can agree that the global supply chain will continue to be volatile in the years to come. Capacity and congestion problems will continue to threaten recovery, but as we saw with COVID, the key is to adapt. Wars and pandemics will come and go, but as forwarders, as long as we're ready to equip ourselves with the resources and bring about a culture to adapt in our offices, we're okay. Forwarders that were willing to be flexible to the new environment found opportunities, and the industry is set to thrive this coming decade, and that's shown in the numbers. We see a study by Transport Intelligence that shows that freight forwarding is projected to be at 12% in 2022. So you have a market growth of 12% for this year. Also, an overall market is slated to be 6.6% .6 higher than the peak that we had in 2019. All of these are fantastic indicators for us to look forward to. And so on that note, I'd like to leave you with this quote, like Michael had shared earlier about uh, the change. I have a quote about adaptation. So it's not the strongest of the species that survive or the most intelligent, but the ones that are most responsive to change. That quote needs no further explanation. I wish you all a fantastic four days of networking. You all have been brave to take the journey from across the world despite all the travel difficulties. So kudos to you, good luck, and thank you for listening.